All right, so we're going to look at the page setup. Okay, so you just open your Microsoft Word document and then you can come all the way to layout over here and you have the page setup down here. So there are multiple things which you can look into and try to adjust according to your document. So the first is the margin to the top left over here. When you click on this small arrow, you have the last custom setting that you have and then you have the normal settings. When you look at the bottom, you will see the dimension, the top, bottom, the left and right dimensions. You can see them clearly. And then you can have the narrow option. If you click on narrow, you see you have narrow margins by the sides of the page. And then you can click again and you can have moderate, which is nearly what we have as normal. And then you can have wide. If you have wide, it means it's going to shrink further to something narrow. All right. So next you have mirrored and you can see mirrored. And then you can customize also the margins by just coming to customize and you have the option to set up the starting page section start. Okay, where should it start from even page from old page or from new column or continuous, you have this option to set for yourself. And one thing you should pay attention to is you have the preview panel over here. So whatever you put, you adjust as regards the header and footer, you'll be able to see the preview over here on this one. So the default is 1.27 and you can have the headers and footers on different odd even or even or first pages. You can select to have them all enabled or disabled and you can have the vertical alignment. You have, you can have center or, or bottom justified or you can have top justified. This is the layout. You can have the margins, which is our main concern for today. You can have the top, bottom, right, inside, out dimensions and you're free to adjust accordingly. Right now we have mirrored margins. You can check it to normal. And when you play around with the margins, you can see the preview over here as you increase the top. And as you play around with the bottom, you will also be able to see the increment. Okay. So you can see it very clearly showing over here. And then you can see the default is 2.57, which you can always get back to default or you can come back here and select default and then everything goes back to the default. Okay. So you have the option to uh, customize the margins according to what you have. Okay. You can feel free to try it and make it normal or you can make it two pages per sheet, which you can have something like this, or you can have it book fold, which you can have something like this and you go ahead and play around with the margins as regards the top, bottom, inside and out accordingly. And you have the page setup down here also another advanced feature. You can just go ahead and check out the page attributes. You can check out the formats, any printer, you can specify which printer and the paper size as well. You can specify from here. Is it A4? Is it A5? Is it B5? You can just go ahead and select as, as well as the orientation. Portrait and landscape, you can scale it over here or you can say OK and OK to this and then you can come over. The next is the orientation. Okay, You can change the orientation. Right now it is, let's try and make it, take it back to normal come back to custom margins and then we can take it back to normal. Okay. So okay to this and our page is back to normal. Next is the orientation. You can look at the orientation from this small arrow right now. It's in portrait. You can make it landscape by just clicking on landscape and this will make the entire document to be landscape except where there is a page break. Okay. So in this case we have a page break. That's why the next one is in portrait. Okay. So it means if you insert a page break subsequently from that particular page, uh, whatever effect you have, it's going to have effect from the next page. So if you are, want to insert a page break, you just specify with the cursor at any given point, any page that you want to break to the next, you just come all the way, stay on the layout and come down to page break and you can say break to next page. So you just click on break to next page and you can see it breaks it to next page. So whatever you put here, is you can change the orientation at this point to maybe landscape and you can see it has changed to landscape and then subsequently it still remains at portrait. Okay. So if you have a specification that you want to change from a given angle or from here, for example, downwards, you can do the page break. You can insert page breaks and everything was going to change. So let me undo this just for understanding sake. Next is you can check the number of columns right now is in one column over here. You can decide to make it in two columns or three columns, depending on some manuscript requirements. You may be required to provide two columns. So you can just come over here, select it and come to layout. Then you can see two columns and you can see 
it has just been changed to two columns or you can have three columns where necessary you can have it three columns and you can see well arranged equally spaced and then you can have left or right aligned you can do all that or you can check out more columns you can define the number of columns directly from here right now and this is one this is two and you can see the preview over here you can see this is three this is left aligned and this is right aligned and depending this is two columns so you can make it four if you want you can come back to one and then you can subdivide it to four if you want and it's going to just kind of divide it into four for you and then you can play around with the column spacing column width okay you can play around with it over here and you can select and adjust the alignment accordingly okay so you can see the various equal width if you want it to be equal with you can select selected sections or the whole document is it the selected section like right now we're dealing with selected sections okay and if you want it to be in the whole document you can equally specify okay so this is how to just change the column numbers from one to two to three to even four more than that you can we get back to one at any given point if you want the next thing is we can try to look at line numbers Line numbers are extremely important when you are trying to deal with some manuscripts. If you want to track changes or corrections, it's very easy for you to have line numbers. So to insert line numbers, usually you just come to the document. You can select everything with control A, select the document, and you come to stay at layout, and then you can come to line numbers over here. You can make it continuous. This is the first type. You can see the line numbers. Okay, so it's for ease of reference in terms of corrections of manuscripts for journal publications or conference proceedings or they are about. We we'll make it continuous and if you don't want to make it continuous, you can make it restart on each page. So this is second page, for example, you can see the line numbering restarting from one and this is the first one and the second one restarting from one and then this is the one at the top restarting from one. It can restart on each page. To start from fresh number if you want it to be continuous you just make it continuous and it continues from 35 to 36 and continuously like that and then you can restart each section where there is a section it's going to restart the numbering okay it's very easy to understand depending on the kind of message you are trying to create you can suppress for current paragraph if you don't want it to carry line numbers you can suppress and you have other numbering options as well so you can click on these more options and then you can play around with the numbering options as well so there are a number of things you can check around and see especially over here you can come apply to the whole section or you can check out the line numbers and you can start at a given page or from which page and count by one or is it by one by two or by three you can see restart each page restart each section or make it continuous you can set up all these from this page layout at this point okay so feel free to give it a try and try to explore it right now we can select and say no numbering if you don't want to have no number you can just come back to none and it goes back to none the last thing on this page setup is the hyphenation hyphenation signifies the continuation of a given word maybe it reaches the end and it's too long for it to move to the next line you can just break it and then hyphenate it okay so to hyphenate to insert hyphenation is select the number of wordings and you can come over here and say automatic you have automatic it's going to just connect it just like so you can see a sample have nation over here with this word instructional okay so you can apply it in any way you can see the same way okay same thing you can see galleries you can see it so very easy to have attached hyphenation you can make it automatic you can make it manual and you can have other hyphenation options over here to apply automatic to apply with some caps if you have caps, you can be specific with applying it on caps only, or you can make it manual, or you can limit it to some consecutive number of words. Okay, so feel free to just kind of attempt and see what and what you can try on this page setup, and try to see how you can beautify your Microsoft Word document.